Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Well, we made it back from Minnesota. That was that was quite the jaunt, but I wanna thank the Millennial Farmer for inviting us up there and letting us come up there and inspect his planter and tractor. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for that again. I really appreciate it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the content that we did up there. Um, it was really good planter content, you know, haven't had a whole lot of uh, time to really do that kind of planter content and I thought you know that was really good to show you guys um, the ins and outs of a high-speed planter so I like that and I actually learned a lot uh, about that planter um, on that trip too so it was almost like a training trip for me with planters so that was really cool but uh, we're back in the shop at Atwood and uh, I noticed the the feeder house is leaked down on the combine so that's great um, we're gonna have to look into that. Might be the, uh, the feeder house uh, lowering valve. So I'm gonna pull that guy out and take a look at it. Um, we might just swap it out and then lift the feeder house up and put a mark on the cylinder and see if we're leaking down any at all. But she's on the ground as we speak. So it's definitely leaking off. But uh, I finally got this little tube in, this is for the exhaust manifold pressure sensor. So it's a little different shape than the other one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that mounted up here. I'm sitting in the engine bay right now. So I'm gonna put this tube on and then I'm gonna get the rest of the shields put back on here just so this engine compartment is finally done. I don't have to mess with it anymore. And then we can continue to do the other stuff we gotta do. So let's check it out. So I currently have this tube just kind of mocked up right here just so I could run the engine for now, but it needs to mount right here. So that new tube is going to allow us to get it over here and mount it into place because we're mounted clear over here when we used to be mounted somewhere right around here. So I'm going to get that new tube on. There she is. Looks a lot better. Now we're gonna get all this back on. Shields are complete. It's finally all back together again. See, she's down all the way to the floor. So, while it's down, I'm gonna pop out this header lowering valve right here and uh, see if we got one in stock. Might just pop one of those in, raise it back up and then see if it bleeds down. All right, so I I'll let the feeder house down and then I press and hold the lower button for five seconds and then you shut the engine off. That's gonna bleed all the pressure off that lift circuit for sure. So now we're gonna go in and take this three quarter nut off to get this solenoid off and then we'll pull the the valve out. So went ahead and took this solenoid off too just so I could see in this hole a little better once I pull this out. Um, inch and a quarter socket and we'll pull this solenoid out. We're gonna have to pot swap it. Oh, now I need a rag. Well, I don't see anything stuck in it. Well, I'll just tighten that one up. Cycle the feeder house up and down a few times. See if she holds. Okay, I cycled the feeder house a few times. I'm gonna put a mark out right here 
on this lift cylinder. And we're gonna see if it's bleeding down at all. That'll kind of give me a visual reference right there and we'll just kind of keep an eye on it over the day. Okay, so we're gonna put this drive chain on. We already got this lower chain guide swapped out and we got new idlers here because they were pretty noisy. So we got two new idlers there and that's just simply taking this nut off and pushing the bolt back through and dropping the little idler sprockets out and putting them back in. So that's no big deal. So now we're gonna get this chain installed on here. I usually go about right here. Pick it up here so it doesn't move. Feed it over the lower guide, over the tensioner sprocket. Now, secret is you want to take this back shaft sprocket and you want to take the slack out that direction, hook it around the sprocket, then that gives you a little extra pull to get your link hooks back up. That. You want to take this little clip and you want to install it this direction. It takes some pliers to snap it on there like that. All right, now you want to take an alignment punch. And get this. You want to pull it pretty hard the first time. Get that thing situated where it needs to be. Getting the right hole. Should be able to push it down to the guide, but it should be hovering off the guide. You don't want you don't want it too tight. But this new chain is going to stretch a little bit, so being just a smidge too tight to start the season ain't a terrible thing. We also got this Contour Master link right here replaced. So that's done. I guess we can check some stuff off here on the whiteboard. Chain guide's done. The drive chain's done. Chain idlers are done. The Contour Master linkage is done. Feeder house conveyor chain is done. And the mid floor wear strips are done. Now what do we want to do? All right, well, we're still holding. So that's good. <clears throat> the next thing on the agenda is we're gonna replace these input seals here. Seal that goes around the, the pinion on the final drive. So you gotta take the drive shafts out again so we can get this seal out and drive a new one in. Okay, so I just take a sharpened screwdriver Started in there. There. Hook it like that. Just pop it out. Clean up this bore. Just want it flush with the housing. Put this shaft back on and just do the exact same thing the other side. Okay, both sides are complete. Shafts are back on, that job's done. So the next job we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this lower clean grain elevator boot. So this section right here, we're gonna replace it because the divider that's in this boot is cracked and somebody's 
attempted to weld it and it's just not worth saving anymore. And we definitely don't want that divider breaking off and going up in the elevator and jamming things up. So we're gonna replace that. And then I'm gonna take you around the other side to see this other bearing. So here's the, the other side for the clean grain auger, this bearing here. It's completely missing the bearing. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll take these four bolts out and then we'll take the bearing off the housing off the other side and then we'll thread this auger out and get it out of the way to where we can swap that bearing out and then swap the, the lower boot on the elevator out as well. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get this chain broke on the clean grain pedal chain. So I got the master link out of there. Then we're going to take this bolt out here, take these four bolts out, this cap, take the lock collar off the bearing, get this bearing off of here. Five millimeter Allen for the set screw. Air hammer. Now we can go to the other side, take the four bolts out for that auger and just thread the auger out the other side so it's out of here. Disconnect the speed sensor. So here I'm taking off the push nut so I can get that bolt out of there um, because that auger will hit that bolt and it won't allow it to come out the hole. So I use my magnet to reach back behind there and get that carriage bolt out so it doesn't drop down. I'm going to drive this pin out here, take this door off. Okay, now we're going to take all the bolts out around here that attaches it to the elevator. And then we're going to take these bolts out here that attaches it to the side of the combine. And then we'll yank this boot out. Okay, got all the bolts out. Hopefully we can get this separated. Thank you. 
the divider here. It looks like Ray Charles welded it with his feet. And you can see where that crack is continuing. So these dividers are bad about cracking down here and that crack will work its way across. Eventually this chunk will break off and it'll get sent up in the elevator. So, you know, once it cracks, you know, that far, it's already been attempted to weld. I wasn't even gonna mess with it anymore. We're just gonna replace this, this boot here. Fun fact here. So you see how this opening for the, the clean grain is kind of shaped like a, like a Mickey Mouse head. So the only difference between a 680 and a 690 on this clean grain boot is that the 680 just has a perfect circle hole and the 690, the boot is actually shaped the exact same as this hole is. So you get a little extra capacity coming into the elevator. So you could actually bolt a 690 boot up here because the combines are the same on this end. The only difference is this boot here. So we're gonna get a new gasket on here. This little gasket goes on there and uh, we'll get this thing thrown back up in here. Okay, now we're gonna get the new boot up in there. get a couple bolts hold it on now we're going to take some combine sealant put some right in here in the corners and then we'll bolt it up add my silicone I got a this is the the tube grip and it gets every little morsel out of these things Get all the bolts in. Get all the bolts in. boot is installed. Now we're going to throw a, a new door on there and then we'll go to the other side get that bearing done so we could shove the auger back through and then put this bearing housing back on, wrap the chain back around, get it adjusted and this job's done. Now we're going to tackle this mess. Our Stone wheels, also our lock collar for our bearing. Five millimeter Allen there. That's convenient. 
Okay, now we're just left with this inner race here that we got to get off, but I'm going to clean this shaft up and smooth out this set screw mark here. Soak it down with some penetrant oil and see if we can't air hammer this guy off of here. Now we're going to go ahead and thread this auger back through. Probably caught on the chain on the other side now. Okay, now we're going to assemble the new bearing. Need to put this bolt back in with a new push nut. You don't put these in, it'll make your life a little harder. Push nuts are your friend. So now we're gonna wiggle this new bearing on. I left these loose so this would have a little bit of wiggle here. And we'll go ahead and tighten these and then we're going to go the other side to make sure we've got the sprocket in alignment in that boo and we'll lock that side down then we'll come back over here and lock this side down okay now we put our spacer in And I put a new bearing in this housing and he's got these cutouts here to where you can hit the bearing with a punch and a hammer and turn it sideways and pull it out and then you put a new one in sideways and then you just twist it into position to lock it in. And we just put our bolts in. Don't tighten them. Just just gonna put them in for right now. Okay. I will check our alignment. You don't want a bunch of slop in that spacer. You want to make sure that the sprocket is running right in the groove in the divider. There's a notch in the divider. You want that sprocket to be dead middle there. Okay, so the alignment looks good. So we'll go ahead and slam these bolts down for now. Slamming those bolts down helps seat this bearing all the way. Now we'll put the, the lock collar on. And tighten the set screw. Okay, now we'll put our link back in. And instead of using cotter pins, I'm gonna use S hooks. So there, I got the, the S hooks in. And you don't wanna go too far with those. You don't have to bend them all the way around. You put too much bend in that S hook and it makes it weak and then they can break. You just wanna bend it far enough to where the S hook can't come out. Okay, now we're gonna adjust this chain. What we'll do is we'll use that adjustment bolt to lower the bearing housing down and that will put the weight of the auger on this chain and what we want is we want to be able to slide the chain back and forth on the sprocket but we don't want to pull away from it like this so i'm going to bring this down 
right there. So see, I can still wiggle it back and forth, but I can't pull it away from the sprocket. So once you get it adjusted, you want to take a look at how far down your carriage bolts are in the slot. And you can see we've probably got maybe quarter to three eighths of an inch left of travel and we want it higher to start the season so we'll go ahead and we'll loosen up these bolts again and 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 raise this up just a little bit and then we'll rotate this chain around so we can take a, a half link out right where i took this master link out there's not a half link to take out so we'll have to roll this chain around to where we can find a half link to take out and then we'll try adjusting it again and then hopefully our our bolt will be more higher up here to we'll have more adjustment so here you go here's a a half link right here so we'll take the cotter pins out take this off take the cotter pin out for here take this link out we'll raise the auger up enough to where we can attach this back to here so that'll give us a lot more adjustment all right, we got that half link out and now we got a lot of room for adjustment. So I don't want the customer to have to stop in field because, you know, their chain's too loose and they ran out of adjustment. Then they're laying in the corn stalks trying to take a half link out. So I don't want them to have to do that. All right, the boot job is done. We'll go around the other side and lock it down. complete okay we can check off a couple more things here uh, clean grain bearing and the boot hey if you guys remember this tractor this is the tractor that needs a dentist that's the 9530 that I pulled teeth out of the transmission sump and uh, Patrick's the lucky guy that got to inherit that so he's already got the cab off and He's almost ready to pull that transmission out. So, you know, once he gets the transmission pulled and he gets it split and put on a stand, you know, I'll come in and film a little bit and see what kind of damage we got going on that bad boy. All right, it's transmission pulling time. Are you ready, Patrick? Yes, sir. All right, we got everything rigged up, got the mounts off, got enough pressure on it where it's just kind of sitting in the hole at the moment. So now we're gonna just start raising up on it and see what we catch on. Ready, Freddy? I reckon. Ready to move again. Yeah.
that's how we do it. Look at that monster. 18 speed power shift transmission. She's a big unit. How much you said that way, Patrick? 3,800 pounds. 3,800 pounds. So Patrick got the transmission tore apart here, got all the shafts exposed, dug some more big chunks out of there, more than I already had pulled out. And we just have some serious carnage up in here. Stuff like that is just everywhere. So if you break that gear, that's part of the clutch drum and shaft assembly. So then that whole shaft would have to get replaced. Or else we got, we had a chunk there. So that shaft's done. Chunk there. But I think the big chunks that we pulled out are gears that are way down in there that we can't see just yet. But at this point we're we're probably looking at a remand. There's just too much damage to try to fix. It wouldn't make sense to try to rebuild this thing, so. There's a serious amount of carnage. You know, there's some chip there. Wonderful. So if we were to rebuild this, you know, when I priced this up, you know, if I'm within 60, 70% of a reman, it's it's a good idea to just go ahead and get a reman. Plus getting all the shafts assemblies for this thing would be a nightmare with the parts situation right now. So if you have like three or four stages that you gotta rebuild, it ends up being close to 70% of the cost of the of a new reman transmission, you know, when you configure labor into it too. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and try to get a reman transmission for this thing. All right, well, that's gonna do it for this episode of ZK Master Tech. We're getting further along on the 680, but we still got some more stuff to go, but uh, I've got to switch gears and go work on a tractor because, you know, it's March 1st and planting season's right around the corner. So sometimes the combine's gotta get put on the back burn a little bit just so we can get ahead on tractors. So I'll be kind of bouncing back and forth between, you know, tractors and this combine and get it done, but I'll get it done. Don't you worry. I'll see you guys next time.